how does caffeine work? Why is it that when I drink mate or coffee, which are my preferred sources of caffeine, do I feel a mental and physical lift? When it comes to coffee, uh, I would say the dose and the timing makes the poison. Mm -hmm. And caffeine has some role, it seems, to play in increasing dopamine. How does caffeine work to make us feel more alert? And does the timing in which we ingest caffeine play an important role in whether or not it works for us or against us? Let's start with how caffeine works. Um, caffeine is in a class of drugs that we call the psychoactive stimulants. So it works through a variety of mechanisms. Um, one is a dopamine mechanism. Dopamine we often think of as a reward chemical, or uh, but dopamine is also very much an alerting neurochemical as well. But its principal mode of action, we believe, in terms of making me more alert and keeping me awake throughout the day, is on the effects of adenosine. Where is this adenosine coming from and where is it accumulating? Yeah, so the adenosine here that we're talking about that is creating the sleep pressure is a central brain phenomenon. And it comes from the neurons themselves combusting energy. As we're awake throughout the day and our brain is metabolically very active, it's accumulating and building up this adenosine. Uh, do we know what the circuit mechanism is for that? I mean, not to um, go too far down the rabbit hole, but for the aficionados no, no. and for myself, uh, we have brain mechanisms like locus ceruleus that are re release things, uh, air brain areas, locus ceruleus just being a brain area, of course, that release things that create that proactively create wakefulness. Yeah. So are those neurons shutting down as a consequence of having too much adenosine? There are two main receptors for adenosine, the A1 receptor and the A2 receptor, and they have different modes of activating brain cells or inactivating or decreasing the likelihood of firing. So this is another example where as I am awake longer, adenosine is released in the brain and my wakefulness areas are being actively shut down by that adenosine and my sleepiness brain areas, so to speak, are being promoted to be more active. Is that correct? That's right. And it's a very progressive process. It's not like a step function where, and sometimes that happens occasionally, but it's usually because you've been sort of driving through and as we'll come on to have caffeine in the system. And then all of a sudden you just hit a wall and it just you know, engulfs you and you go from a zero to the one of sleepiness within a short period of time. The way that caffeine works is that it comes in, competes with quite sharp elbows with adenosine, competitively forces them out of the way, hijacks that receptor by latching onto it, but then just essentially blocks it. It doesn't inactivate the receptor. It doesn't activate the receptor. It functionally inactivates it in the sense that it takes it out of the game for adenosine. So it's it's like someone, you know, coming into a room and you're just about to sit down on the chair and caffeine comes in and just pulls out the chair and you're like, well, now I've got nowhere to sit. And caffeine just keeps pulling out the chairs from adenosine and adenosine, even though it's at the same concentration in your brain. So the real question is what happens when caffeine is dislodged from the adenosine or something? <laughs> Unfortunate things happen. And that's what we call the caffeine crash, which is caffeine has a half-life and it's metabolized. Um, and Do you recall what the half-life is? Yeah, the half-life is somewhere between five to six hours. And the quarter life therefore is somewhere between 10 to 12 hours. It's variable, different people have different um, durations of its action, but for the average adult, five to six hours. That variation we understand, it's down to a liver enzyme or a set of liver enzymes um, of the class that we call the cytochrome P450 enzymes. It's interesting because the caffeine crash at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon when you have work to do is a terrible thing, but what about the person, maybe this person is me in my 20s, <laughs> who says, I'm gonna drink caffeine all day long, and then I want the crash because at 9 or 10 p.m., if I stop drinking caffeine at, say, 6 p.m., and I crash, then I crash into a, a slumber, a, a deep night of sleep. Yeah. Is that sleep really as deep as I think it is? Because given the half-life of caffeine that you mentioned a few moments ago, I have to imagine that having some of that caffeine circulating in my system might disrupt the 
depth of sleep or somehow the architecture of sleep in a way that even if I get eight or who knows, even 10 hours of sleep, it might not be as restorative as I would like it to be.